Hello everyone. This video has been on my to-do list for a year now. Probably not a year, but it's been on my to-do list for a while now. And I haven't gotten around to it because it takes a lot of time to think about what happened, a lot of mental health. <laughs> um, and so I have my Kylie here, my husband Kyle. He went through this immunotherapy reaction with me, so he's with me to help me remember everything correctly. Moral support. And help help let, fill you guys in on my immunotherapy experience. So this footage does not take place, or it takes place in August of 2021 and September. It is not current, this is not what I'm currently going through. I'm just documenting this for memories and for anyone else looking up immunotherapy, I couldn't find anything on immunotherapy back when I went through it. Nope. So maybe this is gonna be helpful, I don't know. And... And people have been asking. Everyone's been asking, um, a lot of people have been asking if immunotherapy is in my future or if it's something I would consider. And the answer to that is no. I cannot do immunotherapy ever again because it tried to kill me. So you will see why. I will show you guys that now and talk about it. I'll insert as many pictures and videos as I can find. Back then I wasn't filming regularly or, or documenting my journey. So I don't have as much stuff as I would like would like to have, but I will include anything I can find. Um, this is a little warning. If you don't like seeing stuff like this, <laughs> click out. I'm gonna be showing pictures of what immunotherapy did to me, so. It was pretty brutal. Pictures of what I looked like, my, my sores and my rashes and stuff, so if that gets to you, this isn't the video for you. Right. So, a quick little backstory, I was diagnosed with cancer in March of 2021 and I went through chemo and radiation, eight rounds of chemo and 30 rounds of radiation to the chest. Cancer was, the cancer was going away after that and it was looking like it was headed in the right direction to be gone soon. I completed chemo and radiation at the beginning of July I think it was like actually July 1st or something. It was. And then I had about a month off before I began immunotherapy and I had one infusion of immunotherapy on August 4th, 2021, 2021. It went really well. I... Can I say real quick? Mm -hmm. For those of you who don't know, immunotherapy is typically followed by first-line treatment. So her first-line treatment was chemo, chemo radiation. radiation yeah. When that proved to be effective, they said, okay, we're gonna try immunotherapy. Mm -hmm. um, and that's almost like a maintenance. You can do it for up to, I think, two years. Some people go, I think, longer. But um, this was supposed to be a in for the long haul, one infusion mm -hmm. a month, mm -hmm. immunotherapy. And what it is, is it's not chemo, but it's um, it almost trains your body to your teach immune your system. immune system to fight the cancer cells as opposed to just kind of pumping the chemo poison into your body it's supposed to train your body to fight the cancer so mm -hmm. it's supposed to be less invasive invasive yeah less harsh on the body i guess mm -hmm. um okay but that's that was the plan and now here. yeah it was supposed to train my immune system as far as we understand it was supposed to train my immune system to kill the cancer right and instead it trained my immune system on how to attack me uh -huh. and my immune system tried to kill me kind yeah. of yeah it was pretty bad um yeah that wasn't good so now you can go it back did the to... opposite of what it was supposed to right my team said after all of this i don't remember who on my team but someone on my team said that two percent or less of people have the reaction that i had to immunotherapy so this is ultra rare if you are watching this video because you're about to start immunotherapy, know that there are so many successful stories with immunotherapy. I'm in lung cancer groups and I have friends who are doing immunotherapy and they are having great success. I was hoping to be one of those great success stories where I reach NED, no evidence of disease, while doing immunotherapy. But unfortunately, 
I was a rare case that reacted terribly. I had the month of July off last year, off of treatment, which was really nice. My sister forced us to go to San Diego on a family vacation. I wasn't up for it because I was down mentally and I still felt the effects of chemo and radiation, but I'm so glad she told us to go and forced us to go because it was such a nice time to make memories, especially before the immunotherapy thing that we didn't know was about to come. Mm -hmm. So I'm really glad we did that. Thank you, sis. Love ya. And I had my infusion of immunotherapy. They go about it the same way as they do chemo at my cancer institute. You go to the chemo ward, you get your port hooked up, and they infuse the liquid immunotherapy into you. Infimsy. Infimsy. There are multiples. In and this was it's called Infimsy or Divermalab. Yeah. I don't know how to say it. We'll put it in the... There's like a generic name and then a non-generic name. Yeah. So that's the immunotherapy that I received. The infusion went well. No issues. I came home from the infusion. I felt really good. good. Yeah. yeah. Like I had a family texting me, how do you feel? And I was surprised to say I feel good. For the next week after, I was saying to people, I feel good. Yep. And I felt my closest to normal in that time that I had felt this whole cancer journey. So I, my first symptom of immunotherapy that I started to get was the night of immunotherapy. I had a light red kind of rash looking thing on my chest, nothing serious, just like it was irritated almost. And I just took note of that, told my team, they said, that's fine. Then the next day it started to get a little worse but also better in ways, so wasn't a big deal. And then on, let, let me look, I have, we have our handy dandy phones to update us or remind us we have our pictures in here with dates. My rash started to get really bad on August 9th, so five days after immunotherapy, on my son's first day of school. <laughs> And I remember I wore a shirt that covered it for drop off because I was self-conscious of it. Mm. And I remember it just feeling like fire inside of my shirt. And so I emailed my team pictures and they said that if it got worse in the next couple of days to let them know because that's not good. So I kept looking up my side effects of immunotherapy and online it said, Rash is normal as a reaction to immunotherapy, but you don't want it to start taking over because then it can be fatal. And I'm thinking, a rash taking over can be fatal? Yep. And so then I was freaked out by my rash on my chest. It seems like the rash was going to my weakest area. So I had just completed the radiation on my chest, so it started to go there first. And then my back also had radiation to it, just from the radiation going, going through, through yeah. my chest to my back. So my chest had it the worst, but my back did get the effects of immunotherapy. So I wasn't getting a rash on my back. I started to get tiny few spots on August 9th on my back, but it was mainly affecting my chest. It was like a blistering rash, so it had little bubbles all over my chest. You can't really tell in the pictures, but it's blisters and then they would pop and then it would just be like raw open wound. And it hurt, it burned, it felt really itchy, it felt like fire. I took pictures to document it for my team. They kept asking me to send pictures. To see if it improved at all, mm -hmm. right? And Is it, this when they prescribed to you the cream to start I training? was putting steroid cream on it yeah. at this time, so my team prescribed me a steroid cream to put on it. We were rubbing it all over your chest and then started on a little bit of your back. And we were doing it on my back so that it wouldn't happen to my back. Yeah. And it just kept getting worse. I don't remember the next place we, oh, hands. The next spot I started seeing the rash, but I didn't realize it was the rash, was on my hands. Yeah, yeah. This was in August, so I thought, oh, it's mosquito season. I always get yeah. bit up by mosquitoes. So I thought I had mosquito bites on my hands. They were so itchy and 
I started telling Kyle like, oh, the mosquitoes are getting me on my hands, but really it was the immunotherapy happening on my, the rash happening on my hands. Once I figured out it was that, my team started to get concerned because yeah. now I had the rash starting on my chest, my back, and my hands. So it wasn't looking good. I started getting oh. sores in my mouth. I had mucositis. I had pneumonitis from radiation. The mucositis is from the immunotherapy reaction. The sores in my mouth were from the immunotherapy reaction. I got sores all on my lips, in the cheeks, under my tongue, on my tongue, in the back of my throat, and sores all down my esophagus. It was excruciatingly painful. I couldn't eat or drink. And then I think they even attempted to send you something for that. Yeah, they gave me medicine for, for the mucositis. Hoping we could, okay, shut this they down. They were trying to shut it down. Mm -hmm. And then it got to the point where you couldn't. I would wake up sealed. and my mouth would be sealed shut from the sores, you know, yeah. joining together on both lips. And I remember one night. Kyle was with Winnie in her room mm -hmm. because she needed him in the night. And Ellis came into my room, our room, to wake me because he was scared and needed yeah, me. And I go to open my mouth to say, what's wrong, buddy? And I couldn't open my mouth and it was sealed. And he was seeing this and he was getting really scared, looking at me like, what's happening, mommy? What are you doing? Yeah. And I felt so bad. I was trying with everything in me to just rip my lips open so I could say, it's okay, it's okay, mommy's okay. Yeah. And I couldn't open my mouth. Oh, it was so sad. Yeah. And I felt so terrible that he was seeing it. I ended up getting water and putting it on my mouth so it could soften the, the seal. And then finally I got it to open and I had to explain to him what was going on. And I felt terrible having him go through that. But it was getting worse with the sores in the mouth and the mucositis in the mouth. It hurt so bad. On August 17th, I started taking oxycodone. Oxycodone, how mm -hmm. do you say it? Oxycodone. Oxycodone? I think it was D-I-N-E. I think it's oxycodone, but... Okay, whatever it is. And my body hated that. I started vomiting from it. I Wasn't projectile. it morphine too? I had morphine before that and I got really bad headaches yeah, from it. Not good. My body didn't like it. And then so we tried the oxycodone or however you say it. And that did not agree with you. And I projectile vomited from that. And I was already unable to eat solid foods at this point. I was on a liquid diet just doing protein shakes. And I thought it was bad to be throwing up what the tiny bit I was getting in me. And then it was the eight, the morning of the 18th, I mm -hmm. walked into your room. He walked in because he was with Winnie again. In the and night. you couldn't get down a tiny sip of water. Right. He was saying, do you think it's time to go to City of Hope? Because my team was saying, <laughs> we if might it, need to bring you right, in and right. have you recover here because if it's getting worse, this is good. We need good. to be in, we right. need, you need mm -hmm. to be in our care in case it gets worse. Yeah. And he, so that morning he came in the room and he, he's, you were surprised I was awake because you came in really early. Oh yeah. And I was crying in bed in pain. I couldn't sleep. Yep. And my esophagus and mouth were just Fire. in so much pain from the sores and mucositis. Yeah. He had me try to drink water and I couldn't even drink water. It hurt so bad. The medicine, I was on oxycodone and it wasn't doing anything for nothing, the pain. Nothing, nothing. And he said, honey, I think that's, it's time it. we go in. Yeah. He got me little pieces of white bread that I rolled I up into that. tiny little balls, like pea-sized balls. And I was just gonna try to swallow those to convince myself that I was okay to stay home. Like, I'll get solid food in me, you'll see. And I couldn't even do that. Couldn't do it. So he said, honey, I think we need to go into City of Hope. And so we did. That day and the next couple days are a blur to me. I am, I black, blocked it out, like I think I blacked out for those few days, I don't really remember, I don't know why, if my body, if it was the medications, or if it was, it's me protecting myself mentally, I don't know why I don't remember it, but we went into the hospital, you weren't allowed with me yet? Not yet. 
and I remember I was in like the triage of ETC at my hospital. It's like the emergency room of the cancer hospital I go to. And I brought a whole duffel bag because my team told me, you're gonna need to come in and stay. And so I knew I was gonna stay. And the people in the triage were like, wow, you're prepared to stay. And I was thinking, you have no, no idea. idea. And so they start looking at me, examining me, and they're like, oh my gosh, this is terrible. They had got teams of, all Experts kinds of teams. From all the different In instantly. So I had a pain management team come in. I had a dermatology team come in. I had a, a sores team. I don't know what they're called. A uh -huh. team for sores. A psychiatrist. Infections, bacterial. Therapist. All, yeah, all kinds of teams were just coming in because they were seeing how severe it was. And they instantly took samples of my rash. They took a sample of my rash from my hand and from my back. They had to do like those little cylinder cookie cutter things. It's tiny, but where they dig into your skin, pull out a chunk of the rash, and then they stitched it up. They didn't give me any injection of numbing or anything for that because they were so concerned. They just wanted it rapid. Like they said, we just want to get this tested as soon as we can. Is it okay if we just go in right now? And I said, sure, yeah, no problem. And it hurt, but it was fine. They ended up fully admitting you. Um, yes, and they let a, you come in at that point. They let me come in, they let you have one visitor a day or something like that. And I could have two total visitors, but one at a time because right. of COVID. It was a little stricter back then, a lot stricter back then. And so my sister Ashley and Kyle were my two visitors and they would rotate taking care of the kids and taking care of me. And my parents actually helped with the kids a lot, and mm. Brad, my sister's husband. Um, so Kyle was in, he was rubbing, oh, I started to get the rash on my feet at that point too. Yeah. So remember, it said, rashes are fine during immunotherapy unless they start to take over, then it can be fatal. And I had the rash on my chest, my back, my hands, my wrists, and my feet at this point. Arms. And on my arms, yeah. and on my arms. And on my legs. Yeah, it was everywhere. And I point. started to have spots of it on my stomach. And my your chest, mouth, your mouth my... was swollen, lips swollen. Mm -hmm. So now it's like just everywhere. It, it was, was taking it, over. Yeah. <laughs> so Kyle was when he came in the hospital. He was rubbing steroid cream on my feet and my hands for me. And when I had the blisters on my feet, I couldn't walk. It hurt so badly to walk. My sister got me these really cushiony slippers from the gift shop at City of Hope and they helped me to get around for the little bit that I needed to. So if you're having something where at the bottom of your feet or having a reaction, bad reaction, try really thick, soft slippers. It really helped me. I remember I was like in and out of consciousness. I don't know if it was the strong medications they were yeah, pumping they in me or stuff. if it was that I was so unwell. I don't know what it was that I, was making me pass out, but I was. And then I was still vomiting. So I remember even Ashley came when you guys traded and I was vomiting in front of her and I was, I felt bad that she had to yeah. see that. Um, but they got me onto steroids, prednisone, they got me on to, what did they switch? Oh, because my body wasn't liking the oxycodone, they switched me to fentanyl. Uh -huh. So I was on fentanyl and I was on so many medications. Oh, on a mouth, really strong nausea medication. A mouth regimen where they'd come in every three hours and the respiratory therapist would help you with mm -hmm. breathing. Well, that wasn't yet. First, oh. still I'm in triage. Then after I, they realize I'm gonna stay. They move me into my room where I'm gonna stay. I ended up staying for 15 days. That's where they started the mouth therapy. What was that? I think it was another form of steroids. Yeah, it was But a, in like that steam form. A steroid, Not it was steam. oxygen, Mist. and it was biotin. So they were just trying to attack the mucositis in there and then they couldn't really get to your esophagus, which they brought in specialists for that later on. Mm -hmm. Um, they were considering doing a biopsy of your esophagus or checking out what's going on. But here are pictures of how they did the therapy for my mouth and my esophagus, which I really liked that therapy. They had to wake me every few hours for that, so even in the night to do it, but it helped so much with relieving the slightest bit of pain. 
at some point they figured out to do it in a mask form mm. versus the tube because my lips were affected and the tube was taking it's away from my lips getting the treatment. So they ended up, one of the nurses suggest, suggested doing a mask form. So we switched to that at some point, which was way better. Um, my sister was concerned that I wasn't able to eat and thought I should get a feeding tube or asked if I should get a feeding tube. And my team said that I could go, I think about a week without eating. Yeah. They said that they were comfortable with, so they were gonna wait and see. And so I just wasn't eating for that beginning. Right. And that was okay. My sister ordered us a bunch of protein shakes to have as a form of nutrient and we're so grateful for her doing that. That was great. I had a whole bunch in the hospital with me. Once it got to the point where they said, okay, we need to start eating, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and you wanted to start trying, you were hungry. Mm -hmm. um, you had to order from the puree menu. Yeah. They... Which is a little challenging, not only just everything's pureed, so it's not the best, mm -hmm. but then also you being vegan, mm -hmm. it was like she could choose from uh, they were really helpful though. Yeah, they, they came up. It was like clear glue, liquid, It was, but it was liquid lidocaine. So I would take this clear glue, put it in my mouth, let it roll to this cheek, let it roll to this cheek, let it coat all the areas of my mouth, swallow it as slow as, slowly as I could because my esophagus hurt so bad. And I would get a five to 10 minute window of getting the purees down. And then it was, it would just numb the pain a little bit. It was, didn't ever completely get rid of the pain. It just got rid of it a little bit, took off the edge. And you'd hit a point and say, that's it. It would rinse off enough so much with the food that I would be like, okay, that's it. So I'd have to like shovel it down. It was really hard. <laughs> the rash on my hands and feet were both blistering as well. At some point, the rash on my feet was completely all blister. So I have pictures where there's some blisters on it, but Throughout the journey, the whole bottom of my foot became blisters at some point. And then even around the tops of my toes, my ankles. So they were open sores. The skin eventually all peeled off of my feet and hands, which didn't hurt, but it was uncomfortable. When I came home from the hospital, my feet felt a lot better, but when that the layer of skin all came off. It felt kind of like raw, raw skin. Exposed so it hurt, skin. yeah, exposed skin, so that hurt. The lighting is changing because it's all cloudy and sunny today. Um, the rash on my hands, I tried to do the dishes two or three times when I got home from the hospital and um, the rash started to come back on my hands instantly. They told me heat triggers the reaction so to stay out of the heat I had the rash also on the tops of my ears mm, and on my scalp yeah. so it was also there um, I have not done the dishes for a year exactly because when the rash started to come back he was like so triggered he said nope you're not doing the dishes absolutely not and I still have the rash will start to come back with heat so I can't do as much hot stuff as I'd like. In the hospital, they had me taking cold showers. Um, at the beginning, I was so weak. My sister helped me shower for my first shower in the hospital, which is embarrassing. And, you know, no one wants to go through that, ask their sister to help them shower. But she made me feel so comfortable. She's a nurse, so she was amazing. And she's just a good person. Yeah. She was amazing with that. I completely flooded the bathroom twice while <laughs> being hospitalized. And the second time I was by myself when I flooded it. The first time was with my sister. So I don't know why, but 
I am hooked up to a port the whole time I'm in the hospital. My port is hooked up to the IV for the constant meds. And so the shower door couldn't completely close. So then water would get out and I just flooded the whole bathroom. Yeah. But you think being at a cancer hospital, they would have a like a little a hole, hole for your cord or something. Yeah, I don't know. So it was very difficult. The second time I flooded the bathroom, I cried so hard. Let's look at our pictures. I cried so hard and had a breakdown in front of everyone who was cleaning up the flood. And it was, it was kind of funny. I was thinking of like, while you were in there, you know, they, your doctors visited you, but everyone was pretty confused. They like wanted to take pictures for studies. Mm -hmm. um, the dermatologists were like fascinated. They brought in a specialist for her esophagus in this area. They brought in two specialists who were going to go in there and look at that. They brought in, um, you know, her oncologist checked on her. Everyone was truly fascinated with this reaction. They were taking pictures. Yeah, they could not believe, you know, what she was going through and that it just, it lasted so long. Um, and they instantly put me on a high dose of steroids, yeah. but then they instantly started to taper that dose. Uh -huh. And I instantly started to have the reaction get worse while I was hospitalized. Started coming back right away. It all started getting worse as soon as they tried to taper a little bit. Yep. So they had to go back up while in the hospital. It's now a year later and I'm still on steroids from that. They wanted me on steroids for just three months. That was the goal, three months after my reaction, but it's been now a year. So, um, a year and a month. Crazy. Um, it was, uh, really sad and scary for us at home. Mm -hmm. for me and the I kids, missed you guys. Right? Yeah, we missed you so much and COVID made it to where the kids couldn't come and see you in the hospital. No. So you went that whole time without hugging them or seeing them up close. We FaceTimed every night, but, mm -hmm. um, we didn't get to like really be with you. And it was really, really hard to you be. Said, you said that my dad and Michael kind of became your partners. They did. Yeah. <laughs> They'd help me get the kids ready in the morning. Walk them to school. Walk them to school with me. Was... Um, they really helped me out. You were still working and my dad was taking care of Winnie. Yeah. My dad's retired. And my brother is like my dad's sidekick. They're mm -hmm. always together. So yeah. he was helping when he was with them. Um, my sister and Brad took the kids a lot, which was really helpful. Mm -hmm. And then like you and Ashley would trade visiting me. It's hard to remember. Our neighbors brought gifts for Kyle and the kids. Yeah. Gift cards to DoorDash because then you could just order food in instead of having everything on your plate because everything was on your plate. Toys to cheer the kids up, which yeah. was really sweet. It, it made really them feel sweet. special. That made me so happy because I couldn't be there to take care of my kids or my husband. And it was really hurting me mentally yeah. to not be able to take care of you guys. I had a cricket join me in the hospital. <laughs> Somehow a cricket made it into that sterile clean hospital and into my room and I thought maybe it was a visitor and I loved him. I named him Jiminy and when people, the staff would come in the room, I would think, oh great, they're going to squish Jiminy or they're going to see him and kill him. Yeah. <laughs> and so I would think, oh hi Jiminy, hide. And Jiminy would hide when they came in and then when they would leave, he would come out and hang out with me. He was there for a good two days. And I thought that was so funny that I had a friend named Jiminy. Jiminy. Uh, one of Kyle's family, students, families, brought dinner for him and the kids. That was really sweet. The hospital staff that took care of me was amazing, amazing. To be hospitalized at City of Hope was my, the best experience. Like it was such a traumatic event but they made me feel so safe yeah, and so great. at home. Even though I was in a hospital room by myself, the staff was amazing. Everyone, the nurses, the, what are those LVNs? Is it LVNs? The caregiver? For the blood pressure and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, LVNs, the everyone. respiratory therapist, the nurses, they the doctors. They were all amazing. Yep. I loved everyone so much. Even the people who delivered my meals were yeah. so nice. So kind. Like everyone made me feel so good. And her, the person who was kind of in charge of her while her oncologist was doing his normal things, mm -hmm. she would call me 
uh, mm -hmm. often. Mm -hmm. And hey, Jenny had a great day today. She's looking good. We're hoping to get her home by such and such day. So hang in there. Yeah. Really sweet. So my oncologist <clears throat> has a team in this department that oversees his patients there. And so she was a PA, I believe, and she was in charge of me. And I loved we her still miss so her, yeah. much. <laughs> So, so much. I always wish I could see her. I wish she was like in my regular oncology office because she was it's so great. great. And I always feel that if I have to go to the emergency area of City of Hope again, it'll be okay because I'll have them. Have her. Yeah. yeah, I'll have my team there. And, and so it makes me feel okay and at peace for if something goes wrong in the future because now I'm <laughs> traumatized and I'm convinced I'm going to end up there all the time. And... Uh, Jenny was having the rash come back here from this most recent cycle of chemo and we both realized that it is absolutely triggering and brings us back to Yeah, this. so now I have a chemo rash. Let's see if I can show it in this shirt. I have a chemo rash and for some reason it goes to this same area, yep. this damaged area, and I had a big breakdown. <laughs> it's I would hard. say like an anxiety attack yeah. and I was crying saying I was afraid I was going to end up in ETC again. I was terrified. I didn't want this to happen, though I felt safe at ETC. I didn't want to be in the hospital away from my family again. And luckily, it's just a chemo rash and we're okay. That's just how chemo works. When I came home, my sister brought me home. She was coming to visit that day at the hospital. And so I had stayed in the hospital for 15 days. My sister came to visit me and they said, you can go home. My team was amazing at trying to get me out. The nurse I had that day was my first time having that nurse. And she was like, oh, I get it. I know you want to go home. She was the quickest at getting all the discharge paperwork done. You know how that can take forever. And she got me out that day. My sister picked me up, which was amazing. I love her. She brought me home. She filmed a little clip of me seeing Kyle and the kids for the first time. You I had seen throughout the whole journey. Right. But like it was my first time seeing the kids. And that was sweet. Hi, Kida. Hi, Kida. She also got a little clip of our two senior dogs seeing mm. me when I came home, Pups and Shiloh. Pups didn't give as much of a reaction. <laughs> but Shiloh, if you don't know, Shiloh is obsessed with me. I adopted him in 2007. He's now 18 years old and he's obsessed with me. He gets anxiety if he's not with me. So you said he seemed like he was grieving the loss of me, yeah. like he thought I was dead. Oh, he he was, he was out depressed. the whole time while you were gone, just sleeping, barely eating. He just seemed broken. So when I came home, he was really happy. Flower was here, but she was still a puppy and separated because she was eating everyone's stuff. So she, we didn't get footage of her. Yeah. Doggy!
I've never seen his tail wag so much. But I was so incredibly weak when I left the hospital and I didn't realize it until I left the hospital. I was walking up the three steps to our house and I felt like I was gonna fall. Like, I couldn't stand. I tried to lift Winnie and I couldn't. I had no muscle strength. My dad continued to watch the kids while I recovered at home. My team said to treat myself as a patient at home. So I was physically home, but I couldn't really do anything. You still did everything, cooking, cleaning, went to work, took Ellis to kindergarten. Then my dad would pick up Ellis from kindergarten. He had Ellis and Winnie until Kyle got home from work. That was amazing. Thank you, dad and mom. And I remember I cried when I was able to eat my first solid meal. <laughs> I had spinach ravioli with mm -hmm. mushrooms. And it, man, it, it touched my soul. Yeah, being able to eat again. I, I made a friend along this journey who has permanent esophagus issues and has to have every meal through a straw. And it made me realize what we take for granted in life, the little things. And the fact that I was able to eat again, I was so grateful and I truly treasure eating. It's such a privilege. Yeah. You don't realize it until you can't eat. It's such a privilege. I'm so grateful for the ability to eat. I remember when we got back, when I got back home, Mrs. Horton, my sister's mother-in-law, got us plant power mm. and I couldn't eat the solid food, but I got a milkshake. She got me a milkshake from there. And it was so fun to mm -hmm. have, we had like a picnic on the living room floor with the kids. It was so fun to have that treat and pretend to be normal. Yep. with a milkshake yep. it felt so good it hurt to drink the milkshake it burned the sores but i felt so normal when i came home i think i had 16 14 or 16 prescriptions yeah it was very overwhelming when we had to go over your he became regimen. my nurse yeah he set up a whole system of my medications he had a our wall had posted notes yeah. of everything yeah you were amazing at that, taking care of everything. What's that? What's that noise? It's baby Yoda. Someone's going ham on it. <laughs> we have a toy that is turning on all by itself. A baby Yoda toy. It's been doing it the last couple days. It's been doing it the last couple it's days. It's going really strong right now. <laughs> we think we think that's like a sign from God or a visitor. It's you hear it? Going. It's a remote control car. Of Yoda. It's been going the whole time. I hated being on all those medications. I felt so weak, shaky, foggy in the head. I wasn't all there mentally. Each time I was able to taper some of my meds or complete a medication, it felt so good. I was on fentanyl, well I was tapering then, but I, about a month after I had been discharged, had been discharged. so I had the patches of fentanyl because I couldn't swallow pills, and they said I could take it as slow as I wanted or as quick as I mm -hmm. wanted, mm -hmm. but I had to do it within this window of how they wanted me to do mm -hmm. it because that could also be fatal if I did it incorrectly. Yeah. And so me, I'm the type of person who wants to get off of medications. I want as little as possible in my body. I don't know why I'm that way. I think I get it from my dad, he's that way. I remember when I was tapering off of it, I was also tapering off of steroids and it was causing extreme joint pain yeah. in my knees. And it started happening in the middle of the night where my knees felt like they were going to explode. My knees hurt so bad. My team had told me if you have anything dramatic or drastic happen as a side effect of tapering, you need to come in, call 911, go in, because it could be killing you. <laughs> the, the tapering off of narcotics and steroids. So if you have anything dramatic, call 911. So he was awake with me trying to help me he was getting freaked out because i was crying like i was in labor it hurt worse than labor where was the pain in my knees in just knees. in my knees and they felt like they were exploding yeah. they felt like they were exploding like i thought my bones were exploding in my knees 
and I couldn't walk. I could barely stand on him. You were having to like carry me. And so he called my sister and he said, Ash, I think she needs to call 911. What do you think? She said, absolutely. Call right now. Call 911, go so in. Did. So we called my dad to come take Ellis to school and take care of Winnie. He was, he's always amazing. Whenever we have anything come up medically, he always steps right in. Um, I'm so grateful for him. But he came in to get the kids, no question. And then you dialed 911. The firefighters came into our house. They were so amazing and kind. They said that they felt comfortable with Kyle driving me to the hospital. I didn't want to go in an ambulance. I don't know why. Am one I of, weird? One of them carried you out to the car. Yeah, I needed. <laughs> that was... I couldn't walk, so one of the firefighters carried oh, me out yeah. to the car. Very handsome gentleman. <laughs> the whole team was handsome. They're all great. They were. Yeah. Um, if you don't know, when I was in high school, I was in love with firefighters. So, like, I wanted to marry a firefighter because I just thought they were so handsome. It's so funny. And, um, so 17-year-old Jenny inside was... Living out her dream. While in pain. <laughs> they were so nice. They were nice. They were amazing. Yep. And they said, we feel comfortable. You guys go into the hospital. Everything will be... So they let know. Kyle drive me because I wanted to go to City of Hope. I didn't want to go... That's yeah. why I didn't want to go in the ambulance. Right. Because I wanted to go to City of Hope. Right. So they said, you know what? We're fine with that. So they let us him take me. They just carried me to the car. <laughs> and then we got to City of you Hope. You know, I love you, right? I'm only yes. teasing. But and then we got there and your pain started to subside. Yeah, and when I got to the city of Pope, my pain started to and subside. And you were sitting we we're both scarred by the fifteen day stay that we just got over. We didn't want to go back, but we knew I didn't we want to have to stay. And then all of a sudden she's sitting there and we're like mm, It took this. so long, their emergency room was so busy. <laughs> right, that it, by the time the doctor saw me, the pain was gone. Gone. Yeah, we walked gone. out. I said, I can walk now, I can do everything normal. Yep. And she was like flabbergasted she like, said okay. okay you can go then yeah. I you know updated my team they said they were comfortable with me leaving and I continued my taper as I was taught my pain doctor was so proud of me for how quickly I oh, tapered yeah. off of she was nice. fentanyl she made me feel really good she was so impressed yeah <laughs> and I was proud of myself for tapering off so quickly you know I have chronic pain with my cancer and I say my cancer because mine is unique to me different than anyone else's even if they have the same diagnosis as me I all don't know. Different. Yeah. it's all different so uniquely mine creates pain and I always get recommendations for medication but I try to medicate as little as possible yeah. because the pain is always there even when I was on fentanyl I was having my rib pain, so I was having my esophagus pain, all the pains. Yep. I was still having it on fentanyl, so if I'm still going to have it, then why take it? Yeah. Why take the meds? Because when I took the meds, it, it, I couldn't operate a vehicle, I couldn't do a lot of things. I felt disoriented. I remember the day Mrs. Horton brought us plant power was my last day taking what's that other pain med i was on um, the liquid one d d d d dilaud dilaud dilaudid mm -hmm. oh if you know about dilaudid you know about dilaudid people yeah. make memes making fun of Do it they? yeah it made me feel so loopy yeah it did i said i'm done and that one they said i could stop whenever i wanted mm -hmm. you could keep taking it and so I said that day, I'm done. I felt so loopy and trippy. I did not like the feeling, so I stopped that one. That day, the fentanyl, I had to do my slow tapering plan that they created for me. Yeah. But when I finally stopped the fentanyl, I felt so much more like myself mentally. I had clear vision. Like, I wasn't in this foggy cloud anymore. It felt so good. That's why I can't wait to get off of the steroids because I still don't feel quite like myself. I have to take Bactrim every week. It's to prevent a lung infection and that doesn't feel good. Maybe that's why I have. 
<laughs> diarrhea today oh, yeah. from the back room. Doesn't that cause it diarrhea? It does cause it, yeah. Uh, it, I have all these side effects <clears throat> from medication. I just want to get as little in my body as possible. After my immunotherapy reaction, my team said we are just going to wait for your body to recover because it cannot go through anything else right now. Immunotherapy tried to kill it and we need to let it build its strength back. And I could feel it. I could feel, I struggled to get it in and out of bed even when I got home from the hospital. So I could feel that my body needed a break. We still did my scans per usual. In my scans, there were questionable things that we had to watch, but it would have been wait and see regardless of my treatment. And by December or January, we realized it was spreading, the cancer was spreading. So my team ordered a PET scan, a brain MRI, and more CT scans. And we found that the cancer spread to my brain. I became stage four. And in March of 2022, I began a new chemo regimen that I am still on. And it is now September. I will be on this chemo regimen for hopefully two years. You know, the spreading of the cancer happened in this wait, waiting period of my body recovering. I always wonder if the it's the immunotherapy that caused it to spread. And the reason I wonder that is because... If my body, if the immunotherapy did the opposite of what it was supposed to do in me, then wouldn't that make the cancer spread? Yeah. I feel like in the beginning when I was first diagnosed, we had these waiting periods for insurance and scans and all the things. And in that whole time, I never had my cancer spread. It didn't grow at all in those m couple months. Yeah. So for it to gra drastically grow so much in a matter of four or five months, when it was going in the right direction before that makes you feel like it. it makes me feel like immunotherapy the reaction i had the rare reaction i had caused my cancer to spread and go crazy yeah <laughs> which i could be wrong but we've always thought it. we don't have any science to back no that up, i have no science to, to just, back that up just certainly no knowledge to back that up just my personal experience and my gut just instinct. certainly everything went the wrong way when that mm -hmm. when that you know in that amount of time mm -hmm. but again i want to say that immunotherapy is great it's incredible i have heard so many success stories of people reaching NED, no evidence of disease, from immunotherapy. So just know that I'm this rare case and it's likely not gonna happen to you if you're getting immunotherapy. Yeah. If you're going through immunotherapy, I send you all my well wishes. I wish you success and happiness and a good life. It gets better. Yeah. You know, I was feeling good on immunotherapy until it started taking over. That is my immunotherapy experience. I hope that answers a lot of questions that I have gotten. I try to answer everyone in the comments, but I never seem to be able to get to everyone. Yeah. I hope that answered questions. If you do have more questions, leave them in the comments. I will be happy to answer them. Oh, my immunotherapy reaction or my steroids caused my jaw to lock to where now my jaw well, for a good eight months, my jaw would not open past this point. So I had to like squish food into my mouth. It's now a year later and my mouth opens all the way, but it still clicks and locks. It feels like all of the muscles are tight in my mouth, like my cheek muscles, my lips. I had the sores everywhere in the mucositis and in my lips, it felt almost as if like someone cut inside of my lip. So it's like a band, my upper lip, and it felt like they cut little slits all throughout it. Like the the sores were eating away the meat inside of me. And so my lips didn't move properly. My bottom lip and my top lip. And then the cheeks and everything was just so tight. It's like so painful. Even now I'm tapering off of steroids and my cheeks and jaw hurt so bad from I don't know if it's the steroids or the immunotherapy. Yeah. Here we are. Grateful I'm, to be here. I'm better. I'm <laughs> better. And I'm getting stronger. Yeah. I have a drastic weight gain of over 60 pounds from the steroids. 
so that's harder on me to get around I think I think that's harder on my joints and stuff but I'm hoping to get off of steroids soon get back to my normal as healthy as can be self as healthy as you know I can be during this I miss having my regular muscle strength I still don't have it but I'm grateful for where I am I'm so grateful for you Good. taking care of me visiting me in the hospital taking care of the kids by yourself working still doing everything doing the dishes all by yourself for over a year and don't look in the kitchen now <laughs> believe it or not I actually like doing the dishes it's like therapeutic it's like my zoning out looking out the window I enjoy it too I doing really do. dishes it's like kind of therapeutic I listen to podcasts when uh -huh. I do dishes and I just zone out so I do miss it, but I can't do it anymore. Or he doesn't let me because he doesn't want me to get the rash. No, not worth it. And I'm sure we'll get there someday. Yeah. Thank you to everyone else who helped and supported us. We had lots of family and friends sending prayers. A lot of people checked in with Kyle. Yep. My, my parents took the kids so much. My dad was like Kyle's partner, life partner in that time, he was. which I'm so grateful for. And my sister, she's always amazing. She's, her and Kyle are like my rocks. And so I'm so grateful for everyone who helped us and was there for us and all the prayers. I have people on, back then I wasn't doing YouTube as much. I was just posting updates on Facebook on a page my cousins created called Our Brave Jenny. And everyone there was sending prayers and encouragement and it helps me so much. It helps me get through it so much. I didn't feel alone. My Instagram is Jenny Appleford if you want to follow me there in more real life time. Thank you for watching my immunotherapy experience. I hope this was helpful to someone. And if not, I at least documented this for the kids to look back on and us to look back on. Yeah, important. Thank, thanks for helping me. Mm -hmm. Of course. Thank you to <clears throat> City of Hope and everyone there that took care of me. You guys were amazing. So amazing. I love you. I love you. Oh, we gotta go. You were so brave and amazing and strong during that whole time of being in the hospital. Thank and you. And you're so positive and um, I admire you, as always. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks for watching.